uh, Valentino giving me shoes. He said he, they both paused when the dude shot, and then he started pulling, you know, he looked at him in the face, and then he started struggling again. He said the dude shot again, and then he shot one more time. He said that's when he shot him in the groin area. And then he said, he, he said, you know, that's when I fell to the ground. Legendary rapper Tupac Shakur would have turned 52 years old today. His unsolved murder and bitter rivalry with the notorious B.I.G. came to define an era of hip hop. That beef started after a shooting right here in New York City. I've uncovered footage from that time many people haven't seen in decades. <laughs> It's December 1st, 1994. The rare, raw footage of Tupac Shakur in a wheelchair the morning after he was shot in Manhattan. Despite five bullet wounds, the iconic rapper is on his way to court to hear the verdict in his sexual assault case. A series of events that would change his life and in turn rap history forever. I wanted to know more, so I searched deep into the Fox 5 archives from our reporting at the time. Tell have no fury like a woman's sport. We found this impromptu press conference. Why am I the only one in court right now? Why is the cameras all on me? Not long after his arrest on the charges. I guess I am going to say that I'm a thug. That's because I came from the gutter and I'm still here. I'm not saying I'm a thug because I want to rob you and rape people and things. I'm a businessman. And outside the court as the trial was under way. I want straight up not guilty. And finally, the night he was shot in the lobby of Quad Studios on November 30th, 1994, a hot spot for rap artists at the time. That's Sean Diddy Combs outside as police arrived on scene. He was shot numerous times, at least twice in the head. Slate writer Joel Anderson, season three of the Slow Burn podcast details that night. So, He's basically in New York while he's on trial doing mixtapes, doing guest appearances on other artists' songs because he needed that money to pay his legal bills to get through that trial. We were granted exclusive access inside Quad Studios located on 7th Avenue in Times Square 29 years after the shooting. And on that night, Tupac was coming to this very space where we are right now. He was going to be a guest on a new track. But that's when it all happened down in the lobby of this building. He's walking around the corner and he hears some familiar voices from several stories above. And the people yelling at him were Lil C's and Chico Del Vec, both members of Biggie's affiliate rap group, Junior Mafia. And so they're all excited to see each other. And Lil C's runs down to the lobby to meet Tupac. Tupac was in the lobby of the building. He was waiting to go upstairs when those three gunmen entered. They demanded jewelry and cash. Tupac initially resisted. Then he was shot five times. And those gunmen made off with about $40,000 worth of jewelry. Eventually, Tupac was dragged into the elevator. What happened next would change the course of rap history forever. He said he grabbed the guy's gun and they were struggling back and forth. Legendary rapper Spice One was Tupac's friend. Together, they recorded classic hits like Jealous Got Me Strapped. He says Shakur told him the story of exactly how it happened. He said he, they both paused. When the dude shot, and then he started pulling, you know, he looked at him in the face, and then he started struggling again. He said, the dude shot again, and then he shot one more time. He said, that's when he shot him in the groin area. And then he said, he, he said, you know, that's when I fell to the ground. Even though there's no evidence Biggie and Sean Combs were involved, Tupac publicly blamed them. Over the years, one man has claimed responsibility, saying he was hired to ambush Tupac and take his jewelry. Was it an inside job? Was it somebody that would just... They were timing it out. Video Music Box DJ and rap historian Ralph McDaniel says the feud that followed pitting East and West Coast against each other, culminating in Tupac and Biggie's still unsolved murders, would come to define a generation in hip hop, which still has consequences to this day. It'll never go away. And people just want to find out well, how did this happen. But I know one thing for sure is that they were best of friends and they were lovers of the culture. And what started that night changed the trajectory of hip hop and further pushed it into the mainstream. Those two men, Biggie and Tupac, remain relevant to this day. And just this month, 
Tupac was given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's awesome. And it's like you think about their legacy. Mm -hmm. They were only alive for such a short period of time, not to mention they were only out, right, putting out music for a short period of time, but they literally just changed the trajectory of hip hop, yeah. just true lyricists. Yeah. And you can still listen to that music today. 24 and 25 years old, the roots still in what a lot of kids listen to these days. Or need to pop, listen to. Whether it's pop or hip hop or whatever it is. He said he, they both caused when the dude shot, and then he started pulling, you know, he looked at him in the face, and then he started struggling again. He said, the dude shot again, and then he shot one more time. He said, that's when he shot him in the groin area. And then he said, he, he said, you know, that's when I fell to the ground.